Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, this song has been in my head all morning, and the young man appears to be confused. Sorry, just making a little joke about Mr. T. Ladies and gentlemen, Tevin Campbell and Confused. Tevin, we're going to have to take it down a little beat. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to let Tevin play in my background and your background so that it's a background thing. But we're going to get rid of the big picture because we can't deal with that big picture right now. I need to show y'all something. Not that one. Ladies and gentlemen, right here. Now, I'm going to have to get rid of Tevin because I see he's a little too loud. I can't handle that being too loud. So we're going to let him... Um, Got to go, Tev. All right. Going to let him go. Just, I don't know why that... I'll be true till it's time. All right. Um, that was on my mind. I don't know why that beat was in my head, but I guess that's from letting music play during the day while I'm doing things. Don't know. But confused... I am not, but all of you will be confused. Say what? All of you will be confused. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a quick video. I need to distract myself because I'm working on documents and I have to put together the language and the wording in such a way to protect people's interests so that, well, what is going to happen here? This is about the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Many of you have never heard of it. Some of you only heard of it when you heard me mention it. But you all know of it. Deprivation of rights while acting under color and authority of law. Many of the old school, old timers, gurus know about that. Title 18, section 241, 242, 247, 248. They know about those things. They know there, there are a lot of you, a lot of your new booties. That's right, I said booties. That, that's what you put on your, your feet, okay? <laughs> He's playing around, mommy. He meant... Oh, he, those are booties too? Okay. Uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, just so that you get it, many of the new people know about the 1983 lawsuit, 1981 lawsuit, 1982 lawsuit, 1985 lawsuit, 1988 lawsuits. Yes, they know about those numbers. Title 42. Well, what you didn't know is Title 42 is a civil code. Say what? Civil. You don't want to use Title 42. You want to use Title 18 first. But you don't want to use none of them stupid titles. Oh, no, you want to use the Civil Rights Act of 1866 first. Not second, not third, not fourth. First. Don't let them tell you, oh, that's a Title uh, uh, 83 suit. No, this is not an 83 suit. This is not a 1983 suit. I wasn't born in 1983. This is an 1866. That's when I was born. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to pay attention to what's being said here. The recent case of Mills versus Electric Auto Light Company, 1970, demonstrates that it is proper for federal courts to award attorney's fees when this remedy effectuates congressional policy. The me in the Mills Court, it extended the established rule allowing recovery of attorney's fees in derivative actions. The plaintiff had sued derivatively or derivatively, see, anyway, on behalf of a corporation seeking to undo the merger of his corporation to another corporation. He alleged that he alleged that the directors had obtained proxies favoring the merger by use of material misrepresentation in the proxy solicitation. We in our organizations have a rule against this. It is strictly prohibited. You cannot we call it lobbying. You cannot go to other members of the organization and get them to side with you, to vote with you. No, everybody has to vote independently. I can't influence anyone and no one can influence anyone else. That is the rule against stuff just like this. But recognizing the strong congressional policy favoring fair corporate suffrage as an important right, the court held that 
part of those who established a violation of the securities law by their cooperation and its officials should be reimbursed by the cooperation. Oh, by the way, a corporation is a co-op. It's a group of individuals cooperating together. For the cost of the establishing of the violation included attorney's fees. Now, the court created a stupid remedy. We're not concerned about those remedies. What we're concerned about right here. Section 1982 is not a statute providing detailed remedies and thus the policy of evacuating congressional purpose does not militate or militate against an award of attorney's fees. Additionally, here as in Mills, there is a strong congressional policy behind the rights declared in 1982. 1982, ladies and gentlemen, is not law. 1982, let me show it to you, is a civil code, not law. Hold on, we'll talk to you about it in a second. That's a code. We're going to talk about the law. As originally enacted as part of the Civil Rights Act, of 1866, what is now 1982, was to be enforced primarily through federal criminal prosecution. See, that was the intent. This is the court documenting the intent. Responding to the proposed amendment in the House that would have removed the penal sanctions, James Wilson, sponsor of that bill, clearly expressed concerns that Congress had for the enforcement of the newly declared rights. Wilson said that between the two approaches, we don't care what Wilson said. Wilson was not Congress. This was passed by an overwhelming majority. But pay attention to this, ladies and gentlemen. The act was passed with the criminal provision included. Later, the penal provisions were separated or eliminated. No, they weren't. The remaining criminal statute derived from 1866 act was 18 usc 442 or 242 excuse me 241 242 247 applies only to actions under color of law the supreme court said in jones versus alfred alfred i'm sorry that against private discrimination 1982 is today enforceable only by private parties acting on their own initiative Ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to understand something so that you get it. When Congress enacted this act, when they enacted the criminal provisions of 1866, it applied to anyone acting under color and or authority of law. As long as they were doing something, well, the banks down that yes, they do. The banks act under color of law. The Federal Reserve Act the state's financial laws. They're acting under color of law. So 1982 applies, but we don't use 1982. What do we use? What do you use, anybody? We use the Act of Congress. We use the Congressional Act. Um, give me one second, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna have to pause y'all, because right after that, I have to pause. Hold on can't pause it that way I have to pause it the right way so y'all just like Tevin said I'll be true till it's <laughs> ladies and gentlemen this is the actual Civil Rights Act of Congress I will post a link at the base of this video in the description for those of you who would like to have the actual act we don't use codes we use the actual act the code is only evidence the Congressional Act is prima facie evidence of what the law is. Pay attention. And the Constitution is the law of the land. Just that simple. So here is the actual act. We don't use the code because the code has things in it that they done changed and that they done rearranged. Now, hold on. I want y'all to understand. You know, Congress could not amend this. Now, you have to understand law and how things are done in order to understand if Congress could amend this. 
Watch this. You see where it says relating to habeas corpus? Act relating to habeas corpus and regulating judicial proceedings in certain cases. So I need to pull up that act. So give me a second because I need to show y'all something. So one moment. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. Got to turn off the verse recognition. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, one second. I could not find, ladies and gentlemen, the act that abrogated the habeas corpus doctrine. Now remember, habeas corpus is a common law right, not a right governed by Congress. Congress does not get to amend the common law, and the Supreme Court does not get to say that if Congress provides a statutory rule, then it supersedes the common law. They don't get to do that. There's no jurisdiction for them to do that. But the problem is, most of you are not on the level where you can go into these courtrooms challenging these foundational principles because you don't have enough history with it to challenge it. See, what I just said is the Supreme Court doesn't have the authority to say what authority Congress has. Congress does not have the authority to say what authority the Supreme Court has. Congress cannot amend the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Why? Because it was the veto of the president who vetoed the Civil Rights Act of 1866 was overturned by a two-thirds majority of Congress. There is no law. There is no principle. There is no established policy for overcoming a congressional two-thirds majority. That's etched in stone. Why? Because a two-thirds majority overturning of a statute is Congress establishing, if they could, a law under their sovereign authority. See, it says that it must be a two-thirds majority of Congress. So you don't have another Congress coming in and amending the act, even if it was a two-thirds majority. Why? Because the act enacted by two-thirds majority can over be, only be overturned by the people. Sorry, Congress doesn't have the authority to overrule the two-thirds majority because that was the sovereignty of Congress. Again, that is something that I can put together something to bring it to its foundational core in argument, but the rest of you can't because you wouldn't grasp the subtle nuances of the argument. See, the first thing Congress can say is, well, we went back and revisited. Did you revisit it with a two-thirds majority? Well, where's the rule that says you can do that? Did you revisit it with less than a two-thirds majority? Where's the rule that says you can do that? Does the Supreme Court get to make the rule? No, they don't. There was nothing in law saying the Supreme Court gets to overrule a two-thirds majority. Duh! Where does the Supreme Court or the president get to sit up here and dictate over a two-thirds majority of Congress? You see, that's why we have a separation of powers. One branch doesn't get to overrule another branch. Sorry, it's just the way it is. That's why the Supreme Court has never had jurisdiction over the Civil Rights Act of 1866 because that was the sovereign capacity of Congress and the separation of powers, all powers are equal. Remember the Trinity? That's what they were thinking. So all powers are equal, no powers above the other. That's why Congress doesn't have more power than the president. The president doesn't have more power than the Supreme Court. Why? Ladies and gentlemen, because they wanted it to be equal power in the branches of government. Just that they never mentioned the power of the people. Power to the people, wow! Okay, so with that being said, two thirds majority of Congress, Congress can't go back and amend the act. Now you can't bring that argument in court, trust me, because they'll ignore it. The courts do it all the time, talking about what they won't entertain. So what you do entertain is the Civil Rights Act of 1866. That's your boy, that's your best friend, that's your homie from around the way. 
Why do you entertain the Civil Rights Act of 1866? See, I went down to the bottom. Ladies and gentlemen, this act right here that I just pulled up, act to protect all persons and their civil rights and furnish them with a means of vindication, I want y'all to see the very first act. I just, I just need y'all to follow me. Tick-tock, 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 tick-tock. Uh-oh, that's it. That, that's it, that's it. It ends. There is no more. Oh, this is just them overcoming the veto. Okay? The bill passed. Okay? Two-thirds of the House representatives agreeing to the same. Hold on now. Where the Senate at? The bill passed. Two-thirds of the Senate agreeing to the same. So, what this being duly witnessed and attested that the two-thirds majority overcame the veto, who is it that can overcome that? Hmm? Who is it that can overcome that? Who is it, pay attention, that can amend, correct, or erase, or pay attention, revoke any of what was passed by the two-thirds majority? This is the process. Same thing that happened with the uh, Bradley Christopher Stark Act. Now, here is the point. 1925, they have the Writ of Certiorari Act, where the Supreme Court doesn't hear appeals anymore. Uh, 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 not with this act they don't get to. Be it further enacted that upon all questions of law. Now, some of you are going to be bringing up all kinds of stupid questions of law. Don't do that. Make sure... The question you're asking is a constitutionally sound question, such as, does not the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve Board and the Federal Reserve Member Banks have to follow the Federal Reserve Act as written? Is that not the regulatory act for which Congress has put in place that commands them in their duties? Do you understand? Now, let's continue. Arising in any cause under the provisions of this act. Those of you who've done arbitration, you went to the court. Go back into the court if you really want to get your arbitration confirmed. Ask the court the question. Sorry. I have to bring this back to you because you never decided on the question as to whether or not a person has a right to do a notice of change in terms of conditions of an agreement especially when there are no prohibitions in the agreement between the parties and whether or not a party who has a duty to communicate because all parties in an agreement have an, a, a duty to communicate with each other if they have a duty to communicate do they not also have a duty to respond and if they have a duty to respond to provide information to provide documentation and they fail to provide that information and documentation and if the Conditional acceptance of the agreement is contingent upon the provisions of them providing those documents and or items, and they fail to do so, and that was made part of the conditional acceptance, and by them doing that, is it not an act or an action or an inaction and or a performance and or a conduct that is deemed as an acquiescence to the agreement well if that's the case then how could the court say that there was no agreement either it's the arbitrator's decision to determine whether or not there's a valid agreement or it's the court's decision and since the supreme court has already ruled that it's the arbitrator's right to do so do the courts have the authority to ignore Supreme Court precedent, star decisis? That would be the question if it were me. And I'd go back in the federal court. Even if they denied me, I'd go back in on a reconsideration. It doesn't cost you any monies to do a reconsideration. And when they ignore your reconsideration, then you appeal it to the appeals court. And when they ignore your reconsideration and you're appealing to the appeals court, then you take as shall be necessary to prevent violations and enforce the due execution of this act, the party shall have the right under this act and the provisions of this act to a final appeal to be taken to the Supreme Court of the United States. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you have the right. Now, if you read this, you'll see what other rights you have. You have the right. This was before the courts became corporations. This is before they stopped, uh, started flying that flag in the court. However, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are having a problem, those of you who are having a problem with the courts, those of you who are having a problem with the banks, just take my word for it, go over this act, and bring forth a complaint under the criminal provisions. Criminal provisions, not the civil provisions. Watch this. Uh, yeah, because it uses words like, see, criminal jurisdiction. Pay attention right here. <sighs> Set offenses subject to fines not exceeding $1,000 imprisonment, not exceeding six months by indictment or conviction before the District Court of the United States for the District and in which said offense may have been committed and before the proper court and before the proper court and before the proper court of criminal jurisdiction if committed within any one of the organized territories of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, you can bring forth a complaint. Pay attention. You can bring forth a complaint under this before a proper court that has criminal jurisdiction if the act was committed within one of the territories of the United States. Look up the definition for territory of the United States as of 1866, and you'll see that was every state in the United States being a territory of the state. Okay? So what are the offenses that a person can commit? That any person who shall knowingly and willfully obstruct, hinder, or prevent any officer or other person charged with the execution of any warrant or process issued under the provisions of this act, pay attention, or process issued under provision of this act, there you go, even blocking your bringing forth a criminal complaint of information via affidavit because you can be convicted after information or indictment. So anyone hindering or preventing you other person charged with the execution of any warrant or process issued under the provision of this act or any person or persons conspiracy lawfully assisting him or them for arresting any person or from arresting any person for whose apprehension such warrant or process may have been issued or shall rescue or attempt to rescue such a person that's that conspiracy when they come to each other's aid from the custody of the officer, other person or persons, or those lawfully assisting the aforesaid, when so arrested pursuant to the authority herein given and declared, or shall aid, abet, or assist any person so arrested of the aforesaid, directly or indirectly, ladies and gentlemen, this is the provisions that protect you. You have to get in here and understand it. Now remember, we talked to you about the militias, okay? We talked to y'all about the militias. Militias, y'all got some power. Let's read just for a second. Or person so appointed to execute any warrant or process or process, as aforesaid, shall have authority to summon and call to their aid bystanders or posse comatitis. Comatitis of the proper county or such portions of the land or naval forces of the United States or of the militia as may be necessary for the performance of the duties on which they are charged and to the issuance of a faithful observance of the clause of the Constitution, faithful observance of the clause of the Constitution which prohibits slavery Submitting one to the jurisdiction of the court is a form of slavery, especially when they object to such submission. Ladies and gentlemen, go over the Truth and Lending Act and go over the rescission provisions. If they withheld any material fact, remember, you're in that courtroom. That's a court not of law, but that's a court of military jurisdiction. If it's not a court of military jurisdiction, then have it proved on the record. Don't just say it's not. Prove it's not. See the court. That's already been decided. Decided where? I wasn't there. 
That had nothing to do with me. That case was about something completely different. No, I'm raising the issue now, so put it on the record. State it on and for the record that this is not a military tribunal. Go ahead. State on and for the record that that flag is not under the authority of the executive branch. Go ahead, say it. Because you can't say that it's not under the authority of the executive branch because the flag belongs to the authority of the executive branch. So after you say that it is under the authority of the executive branch, then you just lied. Why? Because it's not under the authority of the executive branch. When it has that gold fringe around it, that's under the authority of the military branch of government. Wait, there's a military branch of government? Well, military is its own branch, and it's its own government. That's why all military bases are sovereign territory. I know, because they can't be on American soil. So they're not the military branch of government. They are the military branch, a government. Yes, the military is its own government. That's why they have their own courts, people. That's why they have their own treasury. Go ahead, talk to me. Tell me something. Tell her about it. Okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of information so I'm going to put this in a nutshell to make it easier because, like I said, I have a lot on my mind and i got to get to these documents because I promised my people. But I need this distraction so that I can focus on their documents because there's just too much here. Do yourselves a favor, people. This is here to protect you. The Freedmen's Bureau has been disbanded, but that's not true. They've been replaced with the FBI. Okay? The Freedmen's Bureau. Go ahead and look up Freedmen. I promise you, you guys will understand. I promise you, so will understand. Now, oh, I was, I had this pulled up. Wolf withdrawal of consent, a government of fraud and deception. I'm going to take these. I'm going to put these online. Um, they're going to, we can't, I'm going to put them on SACOM. Because that's the only place I can put them so that they don't conflict with the other organizations and what they do. These will be put in a folder under the first folder. Okay. Uh, I think it's called a lawful process or something that way. And so it'll be, and I'm going to put withdrawal of consent. I'll put it all under there. I'll put it all under there. I haven't read this document. But you want to know something? Whoever put this document together went through a whole lot of time. Let's get to the bottom. Let's get to the bottom of this. Give me one second. Mary Moore and Curtis Richard. Got to gotta pull that up because my, my, my eyes ain't what they, my eyes are glory. Anyway, uh, Curtis Richard Killenbach. Okay. Do you see these individuals went through a lot of trouble? Now, look. I cannot. Oh, they talk about the art of words, that capitalization. Hoo and let me, that's his public declaration. Okay, I get that. Aw, oh, the King James Version, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thy not. If someone uh, tries to get you to go in service and all of that stuff, don't you dare be consenting. Uh, Georgia, oh, well, they got a lot of people who, who sat up here and said, hey, we pledge our lives and our fortunes. They put the Declaration of Independence in this mother too. And I give them credit. There is a way to properly enforce something like this. Okay, there is a way. They attach the Declaration of Independence. Ah, uh -huh. now look, I'm not advocating this. I haven't read this. This is my first time seeing this document and, and looking into it. I may have seen it before. I can't say I has and I can't say as I has it. But all I can tell you is follow this. Take the document. Amend it. Okay, let me show you uh, the amendment. Hold on. Let's see if I saved it already. I believe I did save it. And so, hey, Coins versus Virginia. I haven't seen that case in a while withdrawal of consent now watch this tick tock tick tock come on hurry up i wanna 
open and PDF exchange. And then I get rid of that. Uh, we, courts, have no more right to decline the exercise of jurisdiction which is given that to usurp that which is given Sp should be then to usurp that which is given. See, here's the thing. This is done on purpose by some agencies. Okay, you see where it says that to usurp? It's supposed to say then to usurp which is given. Okay, Collins, I remember that case. Versus Virginia, that's an actual good case because a lot of pertinent information, pertinent, okay? Pertinent. Federal state within a state. Whoa, there has been created a fictional federal state within the state. Whoa, did you see that right there? Then I said, then, man, I think that sometimes like Thomas Clark Nelson, I think he might be have something to do with this because this sounds like some of the stuff, but it could be some of the people that knew what he knew when he knew what he knew. So somehow they knew. You have somebody who's incarcerated. Something like this might help them out a great deal. Okay? Not the fact that they follow this. Sorry, I just saw something. Public Slavery Tax Act? Excuse me? To implement the application of the Public Slavery Tax Act to workers within the private sector. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no act called the Public Slavery Tax Act, but the Buck Act is what they use to take control over quite a people. Not quite a bit of people, quite a people. And that's when you're reading stuff like this, you need to understand that the guys who wrote this, they understood. Now watch this. I, I wanna I wanna put this federal. Wait, hold on. Fate, fate, fate. It ain't letting me change it. It ain't letting me amend it. This ain't no locked document. Oh, there it is right there. Whoo. Let's see if we can do that again. Uh oh, it ain't letting me change it, y'all. It says you ain't changing nothing in this document. Let's see if I can undo that. Let's see. Okay. Now, try to stop me from doing some amendments to a document when I say I want to do amendments to it. Ladies and gentlemen, basically the document is amendable. Oh, it's amendable. It just, it consents? Yeah, that's what it is. It consents. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of this information seems to be similar to that of uh, Mr. Thomas Clark Nelson. And so I'm going to suggest that you will do yourself a very big favor. I'm not saying go by this, go with this. I'm saying take care of it. Now, I'm going to do everybody a favor. Like I said, I'm going to put it in a folder and I'll put the link to the folder I'll put it in. So this will take a little bit for me to put the video up. I got two things I want to talk about before I get off of this, before I go work on those documents. The first thing I want to talk about is this right here. I'm going to tell you the website because you know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to be pasting all the links to everything underneath every video. It takes too long. But what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the top. Just type this in Google. Tax court allows business bad debt deduction. Just put that in and you want to go to the Journal of Accountancy. Okay, you want to go to this article written in 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, this individual did net operating losses, which is he took his deductions, bad debt deductions. Remember bad debt deductions from the IRS that I've been showing y'all for weeks and months and years? Hold on, hold on. Hold, come on now, hurry up, 453, bad debt deductions. That's what we've been talking about, right? Well, let me show you what somebody did. And the IRS said, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. And the court said, shut up and cut all that whining out. As I told you guys before, I didn't, wasn't able to pull this one up, but I pulled up a different one. But the IRS assesses deficiencies totaling $3 million after it disallowed the 2008 deduction and the related net operating losses, NOL, carry back and carry forwards. Owens petitioned the tax, Owens petitioned the tax, tax court, Owen petitioned the tax court for relief. Ladies and gentlemen, here they give you the rules. A taxpayer may take a deduction for a write-off on a business debt. 
You want to do it as a business. Told you that. The Ninth Circuit Court has developed an 11 factor case with individuals who are lenders who loan money. Well, we didn't loan any money. We're owed a debt. Okay? So we want you to go over this because this will tell you how to do it and what to look out for and the pitfalls and what to add and what not to add. There you go. Ta da! See, don't say you ain't never got nothing from me because all I do is give people stuff. Yeah, he gave me the flu the last time I talked to him. Oh, yeah, he gave me a hernia. Yeah, kicked me right in the. Oh, Lord have mercy. So I give people stuff all the time. Okay? So here y'all is. This is Fui. Ladies and gentlemen, with all the joking around, that's uh, Walmart. Got to get some dog food. I want to take y'all to this video. Wait a minute. What you do? Stop. Stop. We can't show it to you. It's called Died Suddenly. This is not going to be on YouTube much longer. Ladies and gentlemen, I would tell you by all means you are not going to appreciate that video it's going to really cause you a lot of disturbances some of it is going to say wait a minute hold on how could they do that and the others of you are going to say oh that's just propaganda i don't care what people think this is what i can tell you i'm not here to tell you what to think how to think when to think where to think or why to think what i am here to tell you and it's real simple and i need y'all to pay attention to what i'm about to say I've been telling you guys exactly what's in that video for years. Not using the same words, but telling it to you. Do yourselves a favor. Watch the video. Come to your own conclusion. Am I telling you that the information in the video is 100% accurate? No, I'm not telling you that. Am I telling you that the information in the video is actual history? Of course. Because these are interviews. These are things that actually happen. They can prove this to you. There, are, there is footage in there that is disturbing to me because I don't like that type of stuff. However, if I had watched that five years ago, I wouldn't be able to make it through the night. Like I said, I watched that earlier today and I needed a distraction. This video was that distraction. I've had my distraction. Now it's time to do a cool modi and go to work. Okay? So y'all, take care of yourselves. And just remember... Tevin Campbell said he was confused. I know you are after this video, huh? Have a good day, everybody. Gotta go.